God. Praise what he's going to do. What a mighty God we serve. We want to pray for you. Uh, just submit your prayer request and believe God for a miracle. The blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow. The word of God says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I, the Lord, shall be in the midst. So go ahead and call the number on your screen on this global prayer night. We're praying for you. We're believing God to touch you and God to bless you. The blessing of God makes rich and adds no sorrow. God's word says, where two or three are gathered in my name, I, the Lord, shall be in their midst. So I believe the Lord is with us here. He's going to bless us. He's going to move in our lives. He's going to empower us. He's going to encourage us. He's going to bring deliverance to us because God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We want to give God praise for what he's doing. This is the best time to be alive. This is the best time to really stay connected in God's presence. So wherever you are, whatever part of the world you're watching us from, and let us know what you want God to do for you. And we're going to be receiving your progress over the internet. And also, you can go ahead and uh, uh, submit your progress by going to the website. You can submit your progress by simply uh, uh, emailing it. Or you can also call the number <coughs> that's on your screen. And we're going to believe God to touch you. We're going to believe God to bless you. We're going to believe God to speak to you. Because God is a spirit. Uh, with me in the studio are some wonderful sisters. You hear them singing. I want you to share your testimony briefly. Tell us your name and why you love the Lord. Let's start from our sister right here. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for joining in. My name is Sarah, and um, I love God because of all the things that he's done for me in my life. And to share one of the testimonies that he's done for me is um, I was working in a place, and that, that place is so difficult for anybody to move up. And through prayer, and each time when I go to church, the apostle would say, ask God whatever you want, ask God whatever you want. And I believe God to perform miracles, and I just believe that God will do it because the job that I wanted required certifications that I didn't even have. And surely enough, God made a way, and I ended up having a promotion and getting that job, and I want to thank God for that. That's amazing. Praise the Lord. That's powerful. Glory to God. You see, God can do the same for you right where you are if you believe because with God all things are possible. Amen. Uh, talk to us, please. Hi, everybody. My name is Patricia. And worship is just me giving back to God for all that he has done for me. And um, one of my testimonies is that um, I remember a couple of years ago I was looking at my phone and um, I was looking for apartments. And the man of God just come to me and he just said, uh, to start looking for a house and I put my, my faith in action and I start you know working on my credit and then he keep praying for me and he having me declaring that no more limits and I keep sowing the seed you know I, you know my first fruit and then my husband and then we just like really like take that very seriously and then um God was able to bless us with a home and they was the exact amount that the man of God had prayed for us for it so I give God praise for that. Amen. Talk to us. Uh, Hallelujah. My name is Milka. Um, I worship God because he is awesome. I love the Lord for everything that he has done for me and what he's continuing to do for me and my family. Uh, one of the recent testimonies that I have is that um, I had problems with receiving my uh, income tax for the past couple of years. And um, after a brother at church testified about how God opened up doors for him, I've been coming to the man of God to pray for me and my family. And they kept saying that I owed money and that me and my husband, they garnished both of our checks. And this year I filed taxes not thinking that I was going to get anything. I didn't have hope on it. I just left it in God's hands. And after the brother at church testified, I said, Lord, if you could do it for him, you could do it for me. And out of nowhere, after I filled out my taxes, not thinking I was going to get anything back, the person who prepared it called and said, hey, I have your check. And I'm thinking that he had a mistake. And I'm telling him, what does it say? Whose name is it? Spell it out for me, trying to be sure if it's for me. And he's, he even said, if you don't want the check, I can keep it. I said, no. Me and my husband ran down there, picked up the check and cashed it and just give God praise because we did not expect it. And it was an open door for us financially because only God knew what we were struggling with, and he's the only one that made that way. Amen. We give God praise for that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. One more guy here. Amen. Hello. My name is Serge, and my testimony, I want to give God praise. Me and my wife for a while, we've been, um, you know, trying to have a baby, a baby. 
and you know, for many years now, for about six years, I want to say, and you know, God works in mysterious ways. It's, you know, out of nowhere, He blessed us with two. You know, He blessed us with two, and we came to find out that the sex is girls, and I give God praise for that. So, if you believe in God for a miracle right where you were, the power of God is going to touch you. Uh, uh, we have some technical difficulty with our conference call. Uh, our, br br our brother Barry is really working hard to get it fixed. Do we have some money ready to go live? Uh, give me a signal so we can be able to uh, see what's happening. Do we have a, a shot ready for her there? Can somebody talk to me? All right, so let's hear from Samantha what's going on. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you so much. Just introduce yourself, uh, both of you and uh, sister. The other sister there was taking the phone calls. Let people know. Look in the camera, talk to them. Yes, introduce yourselves. In the camera right there. Perfect. Both of you. Hi, my name is Samantha. Amen. Tell us your name. What, what do you serve God? What do you love God? I love God because God has done numerous of different things for me to daughter was suffering from a bad skin condition and one night I was at the um, DF and the apostle called her out and prayed for her and ever since then her skin has been clear no skin condition, no eczema and it's been a relief Amen. so I give God praise for that Amen Praise the Lord and uh, you're going to be receiving the prayer calls uh, I mean, the, 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 our, you're pressing our website and the, as the prayer P prayer requests are coming in. Let them know what you're doing there briefly. Talk to them in the camera. <laughs> um, right now, no, no. Uh, just let, let them know what you're going to be doing. We're gonna, we'll be back to you again. Just tell them what, what you're going to be doing. Okay, right now I'm receiving um, requests from the online um, part of the service. So if you have any prayer requests you would like to submit online, you can go ahead and submit on powerevangelism.net so go ahead and submit it, and I will be reading it out, and we all be will be praying for you. Amen. Okay, can we talk to Ben Shada also, please? Is she there? Yeah. All right, look in the camera. Talk to people. Can you get gentlemen find on the camera so they can see her face? Thank you. Um, yes, I just want to um, give God praise because... Can you, can you uh, Samantha, can you... Yeah, thank you. Go ahead. pregnant with my son he was having complications in the womb and the um, OBGYN said that he was going to be born retarded and that he was um, going to be born you know not being able to speak or talk but um, Apostle had prayed for me and my husband and he prayed for my family and when my son was born he was born with no complications he wasn't born retarded um, and he's doing so well He's four years old right now. He's doing so well in school, and I just want to thank God for that. And I am taking your phone calls on the prayer line. So when you call the prayer line, I'll be answering, and we will be praying for you when you call. Thank you. As you share that testimony, can you like just, there's some mothers there that are dealing with a kind of condition. Your child was going to be born crippled because of, lack of oxygen supply, whatever doctors were saying, and when you and your husband came and I released a prophetic word over your womb, and then within a week the child was born and the child is no more, just talk to them what it took you to believe God for a creative miracle happened in your womb just a week before the child is born, and how was your reaction when the doctors say what they say? Just briefly talk to them. My son was due to be due in January, but instead he came the following week in December. He was one month premature, but
but when he came out and he surprised the doctors, whatever they were proclaiming on him did not come true. He was not born retarded. He was born with all his limbs. He was born fine, mentally healthy, you know, and everything that they were saying, they were just pronouncing curses upon him, but God had another plan for his life. So I just want to encourage mothers that are pregnant, that are going through tough pregnancy, just Hold on to the word of God and keep worshiping and praying, you know, for another situation to happen. A miracle. God is a miracle working God. Uh, you know, that, 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 that's a blessing to see that God did that miracle for you. You know, and uh, I remember uh, when Brother Shasaji now, his wife has twins, they had done some scientific stuff to get, a ch the, you know, how pregnant it was not working. But, you know, uh, when a prophetic word is released, God moves supernaturally. Your son, tell us about your son. Is he energetic? Is he smart? I mean, you know, tell us briefly. Yes, um, my son is currently in preschool. Every time I go over there, the teachers are always praising him. They say he is so smart. He was like a band for most of the kids in his class. And, you know, it just shocks me so much because the what the doctors were saying while he was in my womb, was so different from what he is now. He is very energetic. He likes to play, go to the playground. He speaks so much words. I'm like, where does he get all these words <laughs> from? But he is just the opposite of what they said. Very smart young man, very articulate, very observant, and prophetic too. Yes. Thank you so much for your testimony. So the people that are receiving your prayer, uh, prayer calls, they're anointed. You know, So even as you call right there, the power of God is going to touch you. And we have an anointed team of people here that are really going to help us uh, as we put together this intense prayer, which is a global prophetic night. And it's such a great team. There's a lot of men here working behind the scene, make sure everything is working well. I'll introduce them to you one day. We've got, we got a great team. We give God praise for what is happening. So wherever you are joining us, I want you to believe God for a miracle. Even as we worship, even as we pray, believe God for a miracle because God is a miracle working God, and there's nothing impossible. So we, as we worship God, we are setting the atmosphere. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, Call unto me, and I'll answer thee, and I'll show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There are things that you don't know that God is about to show you. So maybe you're in California, maybe you're in Georgia, maybe you're in uh, Africa, maybe you're in uh, China, Wuhan, probably in Japan or North Korea. There is no distance in the spirit. Or probably watching this on a rerun. God's glory is going to touch you. God's glory is going to bless you. We are believing God for miracles. As we worship God, call that number. Uh, invade that email. Make your donation. Believe God to bless you. This is the time to experience the glory and the power of God. For nothing is impossible with our God when we believe. We're going, to watch, we're going to sing a song to the Lord that talks about His greatness, Yeshua. Yeshua, when we call you, you will answer. we 
God to move in and up and bless. There's no distance in the spirit. Right where you are, God's glory is going to come and touch you. Right where you are, the blessing of God is reaching you in the spiritual realm. God is going to touch you. God is going to move in your heart. Even as we pray for your prayer requests, believe God for a miracle. You see, the world is afraid of the virus. But we say we fear the Lord. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of the wisdom. Seeking God with all your heart will guarantee your future. I want to say don't be afraid. Put your faith and trust in Jesus. Fear not. He says the word for I'm with you. I'll never leave you, never forsake you. And we give God praise for his mercy. For his glorious presence that is here is touching us, is increasing his presence in our lives, is causing us to see his goodness. 
and his mercy which endures forever. Samantha, talk to us, please. Yes, go ahead, Samantha. Yes, we have a prayer request from Juliet, who's asking for prayer for Monique, Riley, Sean, Marlon, and herself. Um, they are still sick, so they're asking for prayer, uh, for healing, for God to continue the work that he's already has done. They're feeling way better than they were before, but they... We decree the healing power of God to continue moving in their life and touch them and heal them and set them free completely by the stripes of Jesus. We take authority over the spirit of fear and infirmity. Go. God can heal you instantly. God can heal you gradually. You are already healed. You are not dead. You shall live all the days of your life. By the stripes of Jesus, we decree that you are totally healed in Jesus' name. Amen. Talk to us. We have a prayer request um, from Sarah. She had a PET scan recently, and they found a lymph node under her arm. Um, it's very small. She has a biopsy coming up next week, but she's asking God to intervene and heal her so she don't have to go through all the process that it comes with. By the stripes of Jesus, we command those lumps that appear under your arm to dissolve supernaturally. If there is any substance in them that is dangerous, it's subdued. When they run the scan, they're going to be surprised. We speak a creative miracle. Now, in Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. Hallelujah. Go ahead. We have a prayer request from Virus asking God um, to keep, to not let him fall far from Christ, to stay in Christ, and also he would like to have an encounter with the Holy Ghost. Can we turn the mic on, please? Gentlemen, turn my wife's mic on. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Father. We pray in the name of Jesus that you draw the heart close to you in the name of Jesus and baptize Mark with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let the Holy Spirit invade his life, invade his heart, and transform him for the glory of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, go ahead, Samantha. We have a prayer request from Edward um, requesting prayer for Grace, who has COVID-19. Father, we speak to grace that by the stripes of Jesus, I agree with me, all of you. We speak to grace right now in the mighty name of Jesus. We command grace to live and not to die. We rebuke the spirit of death. Depart from grace. COVID-19, die. Jesus is the healer. We kere ba kara ba bo zokora mama, ma tere ba kororo ya mama 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 mama, robo sakara mama mama bo ya babo kora mama mama, re ba babo ya mama 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 mama, roko se kere mama mama mama, yere mama mama soro ya mama mama mama. We speak life. The virus will not claim your life, Grace. We command you to live and not to die. God's hand is not short. It can reach you. May your breathing system begin to work again. May your lungs function. May God deliver you from the aggressive virus. If you're watching us, you're joining us, and you have a virus, the glory of God is touching you right now and healing you. Make sure they can hear the sounds that I'm releasing, brother, in the, in the recording, in the system. Make sure they can hear the sounds. Brother Steve and Barry, make sure they can hear the sounds of the piano. The glory of God is being released. Thank you. I know they can hear my voice, but make sure they can hear the sounds. Jesus. Yes, the sounds of glory are being released. Make sure they can hear the sounds. Father, give you praise. Father, give you praise. The healing is coming to you right now. The healing is coming. The healing is coming. The healing is coming. Jesus. 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 Jesus.
God is touching you. We command the virus to leave you right now. We command the virus to leave your body by the stripes of Jesus. You are healed in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise. Talk to me, Samantha. We have a prayer request for Swinda who um, put in a prayer. Repeat the name again, please. Swinda put a prayer request for Angelica. Her blood pressure is high. She's requesting a, um, a healing prayer. So Angelica needs healing from blood pressure? Yes. Father, we thank you for Angelica. We pray that the glory of God will touch Angelica and heal Angelica by the stripes of Jesus. Let the infirmity live in Jesus' name. Yes, talk to me. A healing prayer for a chest infection from Stella. Father, we pray that you heal Stella from this chest infection. In the mighty name of Jesus, let every spirit of infirmity attacking her be uh, removed right now, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let every strike you took upon your back was for her healing. We decree healing over her right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray total healing and wholeness in Jesus mighty name. Yes, go ahead, Samantha. We have a prayer request from Loretta who's asking for a healing praying. She has constant pain in her head and her body. Loretta is a healing, a healing prayer. Pray for the 
stripes of Jesus. We decree by the stripes of Jesus. Loretta, you heal from pain in your body. By the stripes of Jesus, the pain departs from your body. In Jesus' name, be healed. Be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Rako Sakara Mayama. Talk to us some other. Go ahead. Pat has um has a cyst that's growing behind her hairline near her in the back of her head near her hairline. She's asking for healing from that cyst. Pat? Pat, yes. Yeah, Father, thank you for Pat. We command that cyst to dry. It will not be cancer. We diffuse any contamination, any spiritual manipulation, any sickness. Go! Not in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus. Be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Pat be healed in Jesus' name. The cyst dies. It dries. We siphon any fluid in it. In Jesus' name, by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. Go ahead. Prayer request from David requesting a healing prayer. He's having some breathing problems. Father, we thank you for David. We give you praise because David is healed. You say he has breathing problems? Yes. By the stripes of Jesus, David, you are healed. The breathing problem cease right now in the name of Jesus. Stretch your hand with my hand in the screen. And I command to be healed by the stripes of Jesus. Be healed in Jesus' name. Talk to me, Samantha. Barbara need um, a healing prayer for a celiac disease she has. A celiac disease? Celiac, yeah. Celiac disease. That's Barbara. Yes. Set Barbara free from celiac disease in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. We command the celiac disease to go. Rasa Conte Maraman Kante Bokoshanta La Katarababa. We believe, we believe, we believe, we believe for you. In the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, be healed. Manteba sokoro ya mantara ba koshente, marabu sokonta ra makala ba santa ya ma, shekere mama sakara mama santa, rekete mama mama sontoro ya mama. In the name of Jesus, yes, talk to me. Joyce is requesting prayer for God's guidance. Um, she has a pending charge. We thank you for the prayer request for Joyce. We pray for mercy in the situation and favor. Deliver from the pending charge in the name of Jesus. Give us two more. And ben, whenever Beshad is ready, she can roll in. Okay. I have a um, call in from Pearl. She called in because she has shingles all over her body and is in a lot of pain. Her name is Pearl? Pearl. Pearl. Father, we thank you and we bless you because there is nothing too difficult for you. Marekuso loko romu yama mantara bakoro romu sotoro. Rako sotoro yama karakapusa. Shingles! Go! All of you agree with me. Let's pray now. Marekuso santara bakoro We call you out of the shingles prison. By the stripes of Jesus, we command to be healed. By the stripes of Jesus. Marakama Sandara Baboya Mamandara Babuko Rababuya Mama 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 Busa. All your body is now invaded by the glory. All your body is invaded by the glory. By the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, you're healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you're healed.
command you to be healed by the stripes of Jesus. I command the shingles to leave your body. I want you to get a bottle of water. You're watching me live right now. And I decree over the water the supernatural healing power of God. And as you drink the water, all the shingles leave your body now in Jesus name. Yes. Go ahead. Yes. Augustine called in for prayer for his spiritual life and to keep the faith. We pray for Augustine. Yes. yes, we pray for Augustine in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, that you give him endurance, that in the name of Jesus, and you give him strength for him not to give up in the mighty name, but to continue to trust in you no matter what is going on, but to continue to trust in you, Holy Spirit, comfort him in Jesus' in mighty name we pray. I pray that you give him endurance, Lord Jesus, trust hope in the mighty name of Jesus will come against hopelessness. In Jesus' mighty name, let your word comfort him in the name of Jesus, we pray. Increase his level of faith, Lord. Draw him closer to you. Talk to us. Go ahead. Leon called in requesting prayer for one of his family members that has the virus. We pray for Leon that, Lord, you move in his family members that has a virus. Leon standing in the gap for his family members. We pray that, Lord, you cast the virus out of their family member. Rakote mo shakara bo bo zente malakara bo zente makare bo bo shenta reke pupu santa rababa. In Jesus' name, we speak the virus to die. Lose your hold over the family. In Jesus' name, Amen. Go ahead. Wessler called in. Um, he is asking God to restore an organ that was removed in his body. We pray for a creative miracle for Wessler, Lord Jesus that he will experience the creative miracle in his body, that organ that took out, that organ will grow back, a new one, a healthy one. We speak a creative miracle in Mr. Wessler. Wherever you are right now, there is no distance in the spirit. You ask for a creative miracle. May God do it according to his goodness and mercy by his supernatural mighty hand. Magali called in. She is requesting prayer for Victor who has a fever and he's been told by the doctor that he had a mini stroke. We pray for Victor. The Lord, you set Victor free from the mini stroke. Let blood begin to flow in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for the healing power of God to come upon him by the stripes of Jesus. Your glory is being released now to touch him. Let's pray in the language of the Holy Ghost for the next two minutes. Maraka po zakanda rababu zanta rababu kuramama manda rababu bu ya mama kotoro ya mama mama rababu bu zanda mama mama ya mama 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 Jesus Stroke bow down in Jesus name Talk to us. Talk to us. Yes. Um, Dashamine called in for protection prayer during childbirth. 
Who's that? Dasha mean. Father, thank you for Dasha mean, Lord. She needs protection during childbirth, Lord. Do a miracle for Dasha mean, Lord Jesus. We pray for supernatural protection. That baby will be born without complication. Father, there will be no death. There will be no death on the baby. Oh. Yes, Sanjala called in for prayer or for skin condition. Who's that? Sanjala. Sanjala wants a skin condition miracle. Father yes. speak miracle on the skin. Receive your miracle. We speak miracles. Come on, Sambo. Yes. We speak miracle. We speak miracle. We speak miracle. Talk to us, please. Rosette called in because she had been having pain all over her body for the last three days. By the stripes of Jesus, Rosette be healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus. Be healed, Rosette. Be healed. Be healed. Be healed. Jean called in for prayer for his family for protection. Jean? Jean. We pray for protection over Jean's family by the stripes of Jesus. The protection of God by the blood of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus over him right now. We speak protection. We plead the blood of Jesus over him. Is Go ahead. Is my dean called in for protection, prayer, and request for her health? Is Badin? Yes, is Madin. Is Badin. We pray for protection over you right now. We speak protection over you right now in Jesus' name. Protection, protection of Isbadin. Protection over you right now. Receive. I'll take my bed. I will take up my bed and walk. I will take up my bed and walk. I will take up my bed and walk.
up my bed and walk. I will take up my bed and walk. I will take up my bed and walk because I'm free. Now, as we declare this right now in your homes, the power of God is coming. Continue to call in. Uh, my team is working very aggressively over the email, over the phone lines. I'm going to get two more calls, two more prayer requests right now before we go to the next part of the service, but we're still praying, and my team is here. We're praying. We're here. And share this broadcast on Facebook. Call your friends. Connect your family. Keep sharing. This is the glory of God is being released. As I release this sound here, miracles are happening. Everyone we're praying for is receiving a miracle. And maybe you didn't get it through the lines of busy. Keep calling. And guess what? There is no distance in the spirit. Talk to me, please. Somebody. Oliver submit a request um, for prayer. He has a hormone imbalance in a brain and a brain tu brain tumor. A brain tumor and a hormone imbalance. Yes. We speak deliverance from the demonic attack. You foul spirit, go right now in the mighty name of Jesus by the stripes of Jesus. We command that foul devil to leave right now. Get off. Take your hands off this. Take your hands off. Hey. Yeah, talk to me. Um, Sebastian from India put a request in, and he's asking God for a financial breakthrough. Sebast Sebastian from India. Yes. Father, all the way in India, all the way in India, all the way in India. India! India! What's his name? What's his name? Give me his name again. Sebastian. Sebastian? Yes. Father, declare Sebastian right now in Jesus' name. Sebastian, be healed. Be healed. Be healed, Sebastian. Be delivered from financial hardship. India! Mosaharia Konta. Even as Sebastian has reached out to us for prayer. Me 
millions of people in India are dying from starvation. May God help you out in India. Lord, help the nation of India right now. Give the government help. We pray for the nation right now. India. Jose Kebahara Kama. The church in India, wake from your sleep. Arise. You church in India, wake up. Moka kabo sekere mama mo sekere mama mama. India, wake up. Oko sakara mabo yeba kabo zeke makara mabo yama. India, we call you right now. We call you right now, India. We call you. We call you India. We, we call you out. Lord, feed them. Lord, feed them. Millions of them have no food. Help them, my Lord Jesus, in the nation of India. We thank you for Sebastian. Help my Lord Jesus. 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 Take care of him, Morgan. Those families that have no food, Lord, help them, my Lord Jesus. Help comes from the Lord. Not man, but God, Lord Jesus. Millions of people in the nation that need help. Spare them from there onslaught of this virus in Jesus name we give you praise Jesus we give you glory we give you praise we give you glory we give you honor name as we continue with the service I want to remind you that your focus should be on the Lord and God is going to touch you in India there's no distance in the spirit we receive a lot of prayers from India Pakistan and we thank God for those people that are reaching out by faith wherever you are whatever nation you're in Australia we're going to pray for you me and my team here uh, we are ready to go deeper in the glory and press in to see that the Lord will deliver you and cause miracles to happen you're going to see testimonies coming in from all over the world of what God is doing. We're going to be reading your testimonies. We're going to be sharing with you the miracles, the testimonies of God's glory and God's power. For there is no distance in the spirit. You shall live and you shall not die. We, de we declare life as we continue to minister to God and press in. I'm about to share the word of God that God has laid on my heart. God has shown me some powerful prophetic things that I'm going to be sharing tonight. But as the service is continuing, it's a global prayer night. We're praying for your nation. We're pressing in. We're encountering the glory of God in Jesus' mighty name. The presence of God is here. We're so blessed to be in God's presence. We're going to go to my wife right now. She's going to share something with you. Thank you so much. Your praise is such an amazing night, and we could just sense the glory of God, the presence of God in the atmosphere. Just continue to plug in. Uh, if you have your Bible ready, just get your Bible ready. The man of God going to come. I was going to come and share the word, what the Lord has placed in his heart. And just wanted to encourage you that the Lord, he is in control. Do not be afraid. Do not fear because God is in control. And he will take care of you again. I call the number or prayer line, 561-337-9018. Again, 561-337-9018. You can also go to our, our website, uh, which is www.powerevangelism.net. Again, www.powerevangelism.net. And you can go on our website and uh, place your prayer request, um, you know, write it down and submit your prayer request to us. In every way, uh, we receive your prayer request, either by calling or uh, placing it. We will soon also have a phone number uh, for you available if you would want to text uh, your prayer request that way because we're here to pray for you um, a prophetic prayer night the Lord has placed it in the heart of my husband to start a prophetic prayer night and since we started we receive uh, so much uh, testimonies 
you know, people being healed and the Lord touching them and delivering them and then receiving hope and just receiving uh, courage because this is what the enemy, the Bible says that perfect love cast out all fear. And once we made perfect in love and the love of God and we are secure, we are sure and we believe, we do not walk in doubt, then we're able to experience the love of God, which is we know that he loves us uh, without a doubt and that he's a good father and he watches over you, you know, um, everything that you need. And this is one of the scripture that the Lord has been putting upon my heart that you have not because you ask not. And it's time for us to really go into prayer, ask the Lord, whatever it is that you need, just begin to ask the Lord and thank him. After you ask him, thank him for providing it. Because the Lord said even before we come to him or ask him for anything, he already answers us. All he wants us to do is to take uh, that step of faith and then uh, ask him and believing that he, he, he will deliver and he answers prayer. Because the Bible says God is not meant to lie. So when you read the scripture and with all your heart you believe in the word of God, And when you come to that part, the Lord says, for I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. The Lord even write down his thoughts uh, for us in the Bible so we can go there. You know, uh, he says, I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, uh, thought of peace to give you a future, you know, an expected end. And whenever the enemy come and then trying to put negative thoughts in your mind, like thoughts of hopelessness, uh, doubt and unbelief, then you can quote that scripture that God is watching over me. And his, his thought toward me is good and he loves me. Uh, and I just want to continue with what I shared a little bit um, on Sunday. I, w- I had the opportunity to preach. And, you know, just the revelation that the Lord gave me about his word, about building a foundation on his word. It was so powerful. And, you know, in my heart, I will begin to start a series on that because the Lord had spoke to me twice to uh, to begin to speak about the end time message. And this is where he had had me started is uh, for us to rebuild the foundation again. You know, if you are standing strong in the word of God, the word of God is a foundation. And, you know, some of us who may walk away uh, that the enemy has attacked us with doubt and stuff like that, then there's a crack in our foundation we need to restore to repair that. And this is uh, what the Lord has shown to me is about us standing on the word because the word is a solid rock. It's a firm foundation. And so... um, God will see you through, and he already has. You know, he already has. Do not be afraid. Be encouraged. Uh, you know, the storm is over. That's that's, a, that's the prophetic word tonight. The storm is over, and the Lord has bring uh, peace and, and joy. And also, uh, with that time you have right now in seeking the Lord and repairing the foundation again and then, you know, seeking the Lord, It's an amazing time to also uh, go to our website and then just check out the products that we have. Uh, My husband has a lot of products uh, that will help you to build your faith in the Lord. And, you know, we have, we kept these two here. Um, It's a book uh, by Catherine. Uh, It says, "I I visited heaven and hell after I died for two hours in a true account. Um, that, you know, she died and the Lord was able to show her, like really took her to hell and then took her to heaven and just began to show her um, the afterlife. You know, if you believe in the Lord, you know where you go. But if you do not do not have Jesus in your heart, in your life, we know where you go. And this is our message. This is the preaching of the gospel for you to receive Jesus Christ, that when you leave this life, that you will be with the Lord forever. And also uh, my husband's book, The Secret Place. Um, it's an amazing book about intimacy. You don't really, you don't really see those kind of uh, subject about intimacy with the Lord, seeking the Lord, walking in a different dimension. 
you know, not just knowing that Jesus is, you know, a savior, a redeemer, and we just see him as God, but we're able to come to the place where we walk in close fellowship with the Lord, where uh, the Lord says that Abraham was a friend, not just a servant, you know, but a friend to come to the place to know the Lord in a close relationship. And that is what's really going to get us through uh, this time and any trials or tribulation in your life. Having that close relationship with the Lord is what's going to keep you. You know, it's what's going to help you not to be shaken, knowing that you walk in a close fellowship with the Lord. You know the Father's heart, and, you know, you surrender everything to him. So just be encouraged. The Lord is with you again, 561-337-9018. That's the number to call. That's our prayer line. Uh, our prayer partners are standing by, and they are ready to take your call into pray uh for you and then we also will pray for you here live and just declaring the word of god over you uh again you can go on our website and check out all the products once you order them we'll have them shipped to you as soon as possible uh you know uh the post office they're all open because we do understand that the economy is not fully open yet but they post office is open and we'll be able to send it to you um and also uh we have the dates for our uh camp retreat uh we call it youth camp but it's like a camp retreat uh young adult youth um everyone use that time to get away from the normal or the norm and just to be in a time uh alone with the Lord and seeking him and go after him. It's like a different atmosphere. And I know during this quarantine that um, we kind of doing that, but this is a bit different where we uh, step away from our homes, uh, you know, our job, our daily life, life uh, daily, daily live lives, how we know it, and then just go to a place um, to just be with the Lord. And it's kind of just like what the Lord did. Um, when we read the Bible, the Lord always go up to the mountain by himself to go pray and seek with the Father, just, you know, retreat from it all, um, from everything that is around him, to just have that special time with God. And that's the reason why we started this uh, camp retreat, to just have that uh, special time with the Lord. And it's all about close fellowship. And it's all about intimacy. You know, we need to raise up young men and women in this generation. Um, I believe need to know more or learn more about loving God, about close fellowship, about intimacy, not just knowing about, you know, God's grace, God love you. Yes, that is true. It is written down that God love us and he's, he, he's, he's full of mercy, his grace. You can never understand his grace, but that's not all to God. You know, there, there is this level of intimacy, knowing him walking, you know, close to him. And when you read the book of Genesis, it says that, you know, the Lord will come in the cool of the day, you know, having, you know, fellowshipping with Adam. And, you know, once sin was introduced, we lost that. But thank God for Jesus Christ who came to restore all of that. So basically, when you read in the Bible, everything that happened before the fall in Genesis, that Jesus came and restored all of that to us. So that means the veil is torn uh, we can be able to go to the holy presence of God and just walk in intimacy. So here's my husband. He's going to take over and just, you know, spoke the word of God to you. Praise for this day he has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Jesus Christ is Lord, and the best is yet to come. The Bible says, I was young, now I'm old. I've never seen a righteous forsaken. Now his seed begging for bread. God will never forsake the righteous. When you put your faith and trust in Jesus, God will never forsake you. Uh, it's amazing that uh, the Lord quickened me to begin doing this global prayer campaign because we've been doing these prayers for many years. I began doing these intercession prayers on Fridays when we were in Minneapolis 
and uh, named them Thunder Prayer. So we stepped into the Thunder Prayer and began to pray uh, effectively through the intercession. Our goal was to establish an altar because God is calling us to build an altar. Very important for you to understand that. And uh, what I sense is that a lot of people don't understand how important it is to have an altar. Why we need to have an altar? Because an altar is an atmosphere. Brother Barry, can I have a shot over there so I can know what's happening on that? Thank you. Why we need an altar is important for you to know. An altar is a place of, you know, as meeting the Lord. Your heart has to be right. And when you're in God's presence and the glory of God is upon you, and you understand how significant and important it is to be in God's presence. The anointing is, estab is released through an altar. Now, I'm not going to teach about that, but that's a purpose of intercession. When we set up an intercession and we pray, we're establishing an altar, God's presence. But I want to talk to you about something which is really very important to understand, that this global prayer we're doing is not only impacting is not only set to impact uh, America alone. Let me fix my mic here. But it's set to impact different parts of the world, different nations. Uh, whatever nation you're in, God is going to impact you. God is going to touch you. God is going to do something special, something unique. So, uh, my take on this effectively is to direct you to the place where God can speak to you, where you can hear from God effectively. Specifically because the Lord wants, the, the Bible said, my sheep hear my voice. So I want to give you a little bit, bit of background of what we're doing. Maybe it's your first time to join us on this global prayer campaign. This is Power Evangelism Ministries and we're uh, determined to reach as many souls as possible through the preaching of the gospel and the demonstration of God's power all over the world. Not only in this uh, nation, but all nations around the world need to experience the power of God. So we want to be able to release the power of God and cause the manifestation of the Holy Ghost to come in your region can you lower the background a little bit, please? Thank you. That's better. Thank you. So our goal is to bring the power of God to different regions. That's our vision. Is to lift up Jesus Christ and to bring him to every level of life. So whatever nation you're in, whatever region you're in, God's power will be able to touch you, to come to you, to bless you and deliver you and set you free. Tonight, I want to uh, set an emphasis on what the scripture teaches about prayer. What does the scripture teach about prayer? So, if you can turn with me to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33 and verse 3. The Bible says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, And show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let's also turn to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. 
Brother Barry. I believe you found the scripture. Let's go quickly. Verse 17. But Jesus answered, and I'll read from verse 15. Then the man departed and told the Jews it was Jesus which had made him whole. And therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him because he had done the things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My father walketh thereunto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him because he had not only broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making him equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, The Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son of Man likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that he himself doeth, he will show him greater works than these that you marvel. For as the Father rises, for as the Father raises up the dead and quickeneth them, even so the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but has committed all judgment unto the Son. Now, Jesus Christ introduces something that's so unique. Stepping into a different realm. Walking the works of God. Prayer is not just petitions. Prayer is like you're stepping into a field. And when you step into this field and begin to operate in this field. And you begin to work in this field. And you begin to get the job done in this field. What you're doing, you're walking the works of God. But God is walking through you. So prayer involves us engaging in doing the works of the Lord. So God's workings are being released through the prayer. So as we pray, as we intercede, as we engage, as we fellowship, as we commune with God, as we abide in His presence and walk in the Spirit, the things that God is doing through us. So he's working. We're in his presence. And he's working through us. So God behind the sin gives his angels that ability to engage the enemy in battling him. But God's angels working with us or through us. Technically, the angels are in the spiritual realm, and uh, we're in the natural realm. So, the Father walking through His Son. So, when Jesus was on earth, He walked the works of God. God gave His angels charge over Him. The angels came and ministered to Him. So, prayer is not just asking. Prayer is also declaring. You practice what you believe. You engage in a declaration. The Bible says we shall decree a thing and it shall be established. So you are not a prisoner, but you are open to the things of the Spirit. So there is, the world has been invaded with the pandemic. So there's a pandemic going on on the world today. It's affecting millions of people around the world. This pandemic is a global disaster. It is really uh, claimed over 200,000 people. The answer to this pandemic is not technology or a vaccine. The answer to this pandemic is God through divine intervention. And why is it important to intercede and to pray? Through prayer and intercession, we will stop the onslaught of Satan we will stop the demonic forces that are out causing roadblocks, hindrances, bandages, demonic institutions, 
demonic installation, demonic structures that are operating to cause harm on millions of people. The enemy is using the access of fear. There is a lot of fear that is taking place right now because people are afraid. There's too much fear. The, the Bible says that fear not. Fear not for I am with you. I'll never leave you, not forsake you. So because people are afraid, people are caught up in fear, people are caught up in unbelief, and that is what is causing the multitudes of people to be caught up in depression and engaged in distress. So when people are in distress and they're depressed, that is causing a lot of death and destruction. Over 20,000 people have died in Italy. Over 20,000 have died in uh, in the UK, in France, in Spain, over 60,000 in the United States of America, Africa. The numbers uh, keep changing. China, you don't know exactly what happened. Nobody knows the amount of people that died in China. So when you look at the things that are happening in the world, then you ask yourself a question, what is happening? So intercession and prayer involves approaching God in the spirit for mercy, where you remove the legal ground that is causing the mass destruction of people. And yet you also approach God to see what his will is and then decree his will and declare his intentions. So who is the captain? Our God is the captain. Our God is an awesome God. He's the creator. He is the author and finisher of our faith. He is the one that has established his throne. And you speak to him and he speaks to you. He speaks through you. So as intercession goes forth, as prayer goes forth, as the people of God intercede, as the people of God pray, as the people of God pour out their heart to intercede and to pray, God sends deliverance. So, the religious people doubted. They, they didn't understand what kind of authority Jesus operated in. Now, let's revisit verse 1. After this, there was a feast of Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, there at Jerusalem, by the ship market, a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Tang Bethesda, having five porches. In this lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt with that, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a sudden season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever the first then after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity in 38 years. And Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in the case. He saith unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man with the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Jesus Christ did what this man had struggled to accomplish for all these years. Now, let's look at verse 4. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever the first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole or whatsoever disease he had. This man had been there for 38 years. 38 years, impotent. The devil wants to corrupt, disrupt your life, make your life miserable. No matter how long it takes, what's the intention of the devil? Is to cripple your life, make your life miserable. For uh, No matter how long it takes, that's the intention of the devil, is to make your life miserable. What's the will of God? God's will is that you be free. God's will is that your soul will be free. 
But this man for 38 years could not get to tap into the will of God. Even when an angel came to that place to start up the water, this man could not get there because somebody got there before him. It could never happen for him. He always was in the waiting list. Do you feel like you've been on a waiting list for all those years? Do you feel like it may never happen to you? Are you wondering, when is God going to do this for you? When is this going to happen? And you're wondering in your mind, has God forgotten you? Probably you think in your head, God may never come through for you. I got some news for you. God will come through for you. It requires you to believe. For with faith, all things are possible. So 38 years, this man was crippled. And he suffered for 38 years. Does that feel like you? You see, this prayer is not only to deal with the pandemic, it's also to deal with the curses that have restrained you for all these years. How many years have you been suffering in this bondage? How many years are you dealing with this trouble? How long has it been on you? How many years have you been dealing with this trouble? God wants to deliver you. God wants to set you free. It is possible for God to deliver you. It's possible for God to break that bandage off your life. But how many years have you been waiting for your deliverance to come? I'm talking to you right now. So that's it. What is it going to take for you to come out of that bandage? What is it going to take for you to be delivered? What is it going to take for you to walk free from that pain, from that shame? What is it going to take? It's going to take God's intervention. Now, God has no waiting list. The Bible says, they that wait on the Lord, now get that revelation, shall renew their strength. It never said that you're on his waiting list. You don't wait on a miracle. You don't wait on a deliverance. You wait on him. Now, some of you got a stimulus check from the IRS. They call it the Trump check. And some people are mad because Trump signed it. Let me see. As long as you get the money, it doesn't matter who signed it. Some people already got their check and some people haven't got their check. Some people got a check, but they're already dead. So the money is going to go back to the government. A waiting list is not something that you want to be on. Your situation is so urgent. You need God's intervention. So God's intervention is in the realm of revelation. Not in the realm of worry, anxiety, pondering and trying to figure out why is it taking so long? When is the deliverance going to come? When is the situation going to change? When am I going to be healed? What is it going to take for me to be delivered? What is it going to take for me to come out of this crisis? What is it going to take for me to be free? Your deliverance is not in how long it takes. Your deliverance is when you catch the revelation of who Jesus is. For 38 years, this man... Report. Jesus Christ walks into a situation. Learning how to pray answers. Everybody says, well, we're praying. But they don't believe that God is going to send an answer. They don't believe God is going to send a miracle. They don't believe God is going to send a deliverance. They don't believe God is going to come through. So they're out there wondering when is the miracle going to come. God is going to send a miracle for you. 
So let's look, let's look at verse 6. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he said to him, Will thou be made whole? Will, do you want to be free? Do you want to be made whole? Do you want to be free? Will you thou be made whole? Watch this. His deliverance was not in the pool. His deliverance was not in the pool. His deliverance was not in the pool. That's why for 38 years, somebody bit him to the spot. Somebody bear him to the spot. You see what he mean about that? I'll lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. You see, your help is not in a system. Your help is not in the doctors. God will use the doctors to treat you. But there's a lot of people the doctors treat that die. Doctors treat. God brings the cure. God brings the cure. I want you to follow me closely so you don't miss your miracle. 38 years, somebody bit him to the pool. The angel came. If you look at verse 3, in this lay a great mountain of impotent folk, blind, halt. Withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a sudden season into the pool. And troubled the water, whoever the f whosoever then fast after the troubling of the waters stepped in was made whole. Or whatever disease he had. The first person to get there was healed. This man didn't get there. When Jesus shows up, Jesus did not trouble the water. Because if that was the case, Jesus would have just carried this man and then put him in the water. That's what he was going to do. He would have just carried him and then take him and place him in the water. I want you to find me very closely. His deliverance was in Christ. And that's why Jesus asked him a question. When Jesus saw him lie and knew that he had been now a long time in that case, he says unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man. That's the problem. It's giving him a story. Do you want to be free? Oh, yeah, but I have nobody to take me there. When the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I'm coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus says unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The man's deliverance was in the word of God, which was in the mouth of Jesus that was spoken. That which said, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. The reason why you have not received your miracle is you have not received the word that the Lord has spoken, or your healing or your deliverance, even the virus you are dealing with. It's not what circumstance dictates. It's what the word of God says. Jesus asked him, do you want to be free? The man says, yes, but he gives an excuse and a story. It's easy for us to explain what we are dealing with. We want to talk about our crisis and circumstances. We want to give the complete chapter. You know, if you were to write down the things you're going through today, 
and you're dealing with in your life. It's a complete book. God is saying, rise, take up thy bed and walk. The man's deliverance was in the word of the Lord, not in. Let me say, let me say this one more time. It was in the word of God, not in the pool. The angel came there and troubled the water. Whoever got there was healed. This man was not healed. Was there healing power? Yes. But it was limited. God's word is not limited. And because he wanted to be free, he had the will to be free in the word of God that was spoken. The revelation is about receiving what Christ has for you in his package. For God's word is more powerful. It will cause your healing to manifest, your deliverance to manifest. Are you sick with a virus? Are you sick? Do you have cancer? Do you have diabetes? Are you stressed? Are you oppressed? What does the word of God say? He was wounded for transgression, bruised for iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we were healed. The word that Christ spoke, that's the word that released this man from impotency for 38 years. If Jesus did not come by the pool, this man would have died a cripple. If the Lord doesn't move concerning this virus and this pandemic, billions will die. But I got some news for you. God has already moved because we prayed and we've been crying out to him. And we've been interceding and pressing and storming the heavens. God has intervened. During this global prayer, prophetic prayer, I want to prophesy that in the name of Jesus, no matter how long you've been around the pool, no matter how many years you've waited for that deliverance to come, let it manifest today. In the name of Jesus, no matter how many years it's been holding, now is the time for it to come. I command a shift of faith in your realm to manifest. May the Lord raise the level of faith in your soul. May God cause you right now to step out of that bondage and see the light. May the goodness of mercy come upon you. Say, I believe and I receive it. Don't just listen to what I'm saying. Now begin to believe and receive. Exercise your faith. Once you hear, you act on what the word of God says. Look, listen to verse 9. The Bible says in verse 9, and immediately the man was made whole. Can you put a scripture on the screen if you can? If you can, if you can, that's fine. If someone, whoever is watching this on Facebook, click the share button. Watch on YouTube, subscribe, share, share, share. Click the share button. If you're watching on YouTube, uh, share. If you're watching on Facebook, share. Click the share button. Hit the share button. Share, share. This is a powerful revelation. The healing power of God is coming to you right where you were in the name of Jesus. And immediately the man was made whole. He took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. God did not care whether it was a Sabbath. Every regulation was that this man should stay in crippleness. Watch this. People beat him to the spot. And it was a Sabbath. Nobody's supposed to walk. Jesus came and healed this man and set him free. Jesus wants to deliver you and set you free by his supernatural hand. He wants to set you free. He wants to move in your life. The Lord is moving. The Lord is fixing things. The Lord is causing deliverance. So John chapter 5 and verse 9. And immediately the man was made whole. Took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Watch this. We are praying. There's some of you that are watching me right now. You're in some type of bandage. You're sick. You're depressed. You're stressed out. Maybe you have cancer. Maybe you're crippled. 
Maybe you're blind. Maybe you cannot see. Maybe you cannot hear. Maybe you cannot talk. Maybe you're mute. Maybe I don't know what you're dealing with. But I got some news for you. The mighty stripes of Jesus will heal you. The Lord did not wait for 38 years to sh for this man to be delivered. The man waited for 38 years. Do you know that God would have done your miracle already? It's just a matter of being in the right place in the right time. And this is the right time. You didn't bump into this channel by accident. God brought you here. I want you to hit the share button and bring your friends on. I'm going to decree and declare that by the stripes of Jesus, you're healed and you're delivered and you're set free. Even as I prophesy, your deliverance, dry bones, live again. Dry bones, live again. Dry bones, live again. Even as I prophesy, dry bones, live again. In the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. We're going to go to a clip that happened last year in September. We showed it earlier. We're going to show it to you again when God spoke to me to pray for America. I prayed for the United States of America. Specifically. That was last year before anybody knew that the pandemic was going to come. Some knew. God speaks to his prophets around the world. They had prophesied. One of them that respect is Chuck Pierce. And several others that God had spoken to specifically. But I'm going to talk about what God laid on my heart to pray for America because of what America was dealing with. The crisis that was pending to come when God spoke to me clearly to pray for this nation. I went before the Lord in my face and then prophesied the awakening. So we're going to see that clip and we're going to come back and talk to you. So take us to the clip. Thank you. God bless America. Say one more time. Save America. Save Show the it. United States. Save the United States. Say one more time. This has never happened before in any of my crusades. He said, give America to me. Who am I to be given that instruction? I came to pray for the sick, but now we're praying for America. Sing the national.
America shall repent. America shall experience the awakening. America shall return to Jesus. America shall experience revival. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Am I rise up on the field right now? Come on, declare. Let faith arise in your soul. What you saw there is the glory of God being released when we prayed for this nation. As we put out our heart to intercede for this nation, it's important for you to understand why we have to be prophetic. So when we got into the prophetic act and declared the deliverance of God on this nation, the mighty hand of God being released on this nation specifically for what God is about to do in this region, it's so amazing and so powerful that the Spirit of God is... Are we live? Thank you so much. We give God praise. 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 We give God glory. We give God praise. What you saw there is the manifestation of God's glory in such a, an unusual dimension uh, where the Lord takes you into the future, walking the works of God manifesting the kingdom of God in such a dimension to the glory of God. So I was able to see in the spirit what God was doing and I was able to understand specifically that in the realm of glory, the God we serve is manifesting in the realm these prophetic utterances that reveal the future. And uh, I didn't know why because I was doing a miracle crusade and the Lord was showing me Specifically to pray for this nation. And then, you know, America has been hit the most, more than any other nation. And the prayers of the saints uh, have helped this nation not to get destroyed. Because this pandemic could have shut down this nation completely and turned it to a stone age. But the mercy of God, which is super amazing, prevailed over the wickedness. The mercy of God prevailed over the wickedness that is in the land. So it's important for you as a child of God to understand that you need to pray and uh, walk in the prophetic realm and understand. So Jesus Christ, when he came to bring deliverance over the people that were in the territory, he did not wait for this man to be destroyed. Uh, because if the Lord did not start up the water, that's why I was telling you about the prophetic is the ability to withdraw from the realm of the future. And you see into what God wants to do. That's what we pray prophetically. So the prophetic was able to withdraw from the realm of God, this man's original, in, God's original intent for this man. God never wanted him to be crippled. He never wanted him to be there for 38 years. The Lord wanted him to be free. So the Lord delivered him supernaturally, instantly. And the man was able to take up his bed and walk. He walked out of that bondage supernaturally, instantly. This deliverance that this man encountered was supernatural. It was amazing because there was no delay. God is not putting you on a waiting list. God wants to do that miracle for you today. God wants to heal you today. God wants to deliver you today. I want you to believe God that even as we pray, as we go to the next phase of this prayer. You know, the other day the Lord woke me up and he showed me uh, there's going to be... Uh, Something else is going to happen after this because we prayed and we believe God. God showed me how his angels were being released from heaven. I saw, uh, you know, right after our resurrection service, miracle service, the Lord took me in the spirit and showed me his angels being released because when we had a Passover and then we, you know, we, we celebrated, we remembered what the Lord did because of his death and resurrection. And the Lord showed me after that his angels being released from heaven. 
a cloud was descending. Uh, the, I was I saw this. The, I was in a different realm. I was out of this realm to a different realm. And I, in the glory, the Lord took me to a place where he showed me the heavens opened and then descended this different kind of cloud. And out of this cloud came, I've never seen anything glorious like that. Angels were coming out of and worshiping him and declaring his majesty and were shooting to different parts of the world and marching like they were going out, zooming out, and they were heading out. He's sending them. God is majestic and is moved. God wants to help you. The Bible says he's going to give his angels charge over you. And I believe his angels are being released even as we pray to help you come out of that bondage. To help people get over this COVID-19. You know, this thing is going to be over sooner than you can imagine. And we believe in God. And I want you to believe with me in Jesus' name that no man is going to take credit from this. Because the vaccines are going to take a longer time and then they, they're not the cure. Jesus is the cure. So the Lord has stripped it like, you know, weakened it, stripped it of its ability to harm and delay you. Your process of deliverance and healing in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, what I saw is we need to pray because what happens with the weakness of man is, you know, after God has removed the pandemic, there has to be an awakening. People have to cry to God and seek Him. But what I saw is uh, in the future, Father, give you praise. I'll, I'll release this another time. I'm not going to release it now. I already shared with my wife what I saw. Uh, but I'll definitely, maybe I might share it later on before the broadcast is over. Or I might share it uh, this weekend. We have another two more services coming up Sunday morning uh, at uh, 12 o'clock. We'll be coming again live. And also Sunday night at 8 p.m. So I might share what I saw coming. Something else that is coming up that God showed me. Woke me up and I could I was in that situation and I'll be able to share with that. Uh, but this is a time for you to believe God for a miracle, for deliverance, for healing. There is nothing that is impossible with God when we believe. There is no delay. God has not put you on a waiting list. God wants to do it for you. But you have to believe. For with God, all things are possible. And Jesus is coming back soon. So I want you to rush in your prayer request. We're about to enter storm the heavens. We're going to get in prayer in the next few moments. So go ahead and submit your prayer request. Go into our website and submit them. And they're gonna, we're going to be able to pray for all your prayer requests. You can submit them on our, on, your, on, our, on our website. You can go ahead and submit them on our website. And keep submitting your prayer requests. And we believe in God to shift things out of your, in your life from the state of bondage to, st to the state of freedom. But we're about to go back to, uh, to, to my wife, and she's going to share with you something very important on how to receive. How do you receive from God and uh, what God can do for you when you believe it? Before we go back to her, I just want to let you know that I want you to share this broadcast. Click the share button and keep sharing. Uh, because I told you, just as I shared earlier, a few minutes earlier, earlier when I was downloading this revelation, this man's deliverance was not in a pool. That's why he could not get it for 38 years. It was in God's word. The word the Lord spoke. And that's what the Lord spoke. Without being made all. The man began to explain, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. And Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. You see, his deliverance is, was in the word the Lord spoke. Tonight, you're going to be delivered. You're going to be set free. Your deliverance is in what God says, not what you think, but what God says. So I want to believe, God, that you're going to be delivered and you're going to be set free before this service ends. We're believing, God, for each one of you to be free and have a testimony. Your deliverance is in what the Lord says. In verse 8, Jesus says, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. The man believed what the Lord said and was able to walk. 
When you believe what God says, no power in hell can stop you from receiving your miracle. And we're here to intercede for you. Whatever nation you're in. Jesus is Lord. Go ahead, honey. Talk to them. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, my husband wanted to share uh, to you how to receive. And receiving from the Lord is uh, very easy, but our mind make it complicated. You know, it's, it's very easy to just simply, it just simply has when someone is giving you something or they're offering you something or, uh, you know, we're receiving a gift. It's in your hand. You just take it. And once you take it, and it's as easy as just taking and receiving it. So receiving what God has for you is very easy. Um, let me just take you to an example, because the Bible is the best example. And I believe uh, when we read uh, especially the whole Bible, but the life of the Lord Jesus and the New Testament, everything that the Lord has uh, poured out for us, every story, that is still is for us to learn is an example that the Lord want us to live by. So if you can quickly go to Matthew uh, 17. And we're going to start reading from. Verse 14. I'm going to read from the King James Version first. And verse 14 says, And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire and off into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of unbelief. For verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place. And it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Now, I'm going to quickly read it for you in uh, NLT. Bear with me. We're going to read uh, 20. And verse 20 said, you don't have enough faith. Jesus told them. I tell you the truth, if you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing shall be impossible. So this is the first hindrance to us receiving. Is unbelief. So verse 17 says, Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Then Jesus rebuked the demon and the boy, and they left him. From that moment, the boy was well. Afterward, the disciples asked Jesus privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? Then the Lord replied, you don't have enough faith. And then uh, verse 20 in the King James Version said, and Jesus said unto them, because of unbelief. 
and unbelief is the root cause of, I believe, sin, is not believing God at his word or doubting. Unbelief and doubt, they go hands in hand. And that is what 100% of the time hinder us from receiving what God wants to give us. It, it, the enemy uses it as a, a, a blockage. You know, uh, if once you tap in or once you allow unbelief to take over, thoughts of unbelief, and then you begin to uh, believe it, it's going to be very hard to receive from God. And, you know, it, it's, it's in the, another example is something is like right in front of you because the Bible said the Lord did it 2,000 years ago when he hung on the cross and he was taking his last breath. Jesus said, it is done. He paid the price for all our sin. And he said, it is finished. It is done. So 